Hi everyone and welcome back to the Tackle Share YouTube channel. If you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep more fishing content coming your way. Today we're going to do a DIY lure and that's going to be turning this ordinary kitchen spoon into two spoons that you can use to go fishing. So we're going to get right to it right now. All right, for this project, um, these are a few of the things that you're going to need and some of the other things that I'd suggest you collect but you don't necessarily need. So, of course, we're going to start off with the spoon that we're going to use. You want to make sure that it's stainless so that it's not going to rust after you start your project. Um, and I like to pick one that doesn't have an, a, a very large curvature to it. Um, you can get them very cheaply at the dollar store or at Walmart. Um, you're going to want to have a treble hook, some split rings, um, a file, I'd suggest a flat file, I can't find mine today, so I just have a, a circular file, some sandpaper, a hacksaw, um, a drill, and some paint. And I made sure that the paint that I have um, would adhere to metal specifically. Um, you want to make sure that you wanna, don't want to go through all the effort of painting it for not to stick. So that's all the essential items that you really need. I have a few other items collected that I'd suggest, but I don't think you necessarily need to have. I already have uh, a tool to help me with the split rings on hand, um, a hammer and a nail to help you um, prepare for drilling, and a, a vise, like a tool to hold on to it to keep yourself, keep yourself safe um, and keep everything snug and tight. And of course, a piece of wood that you can use uh, when you're drilling and to protect your surface. So that's everything that I think that you should need. So let's get started. Now, to save myself some excessive filing, I'm going to do myself a favor and draw a nice little line across here just so I can keep track of. Now, I've placed my spoon in the vise. I use the handle uh, portion to give it a good grip. How it's nice and close to the vise to keep it nice and secure. And I'm going to saw away. There we go. Popped it right off there. Ooh, it's a bit warm. It kind of stayed on par. But now you'll notice that it's a little bit rough here. So what I'm gonna do is take my file and I'm going to file that down. But first, I like to be fairly resourceful. And instead of just using the one portion of the spoon, I'm gonna use this portion of the spoon as well. You can get a very good lure out of this backside here too as well. So I'm just going to make another mark where I'm choosing to um, because it bows a bit. I'm going to want to make sure that I have enough enough room to drill a hole there later on. So I'm going to go about there. If I went too far up, I wouldn't have much room for a hole. And there you have it. Now I have two spoons, two different shapes that I'm going to use. And that's all that I'm wasting from that spoon. That's the extra piece that I don't think I'm going to be using. But here are these two nice spoon shapes. So we've, of course, they're fairly rough there. They're not... Uh, quite something that you're going to want to be handling or using. So we're going to get to the filing component. Now I'm going to take my file and like I said before, a flat file would be, you know, much more ideal. Uh, in this case, I can't find mine. <laughs> so I'm just going to use my circular file for now. All right, so now we've got both of those grinded down just so that I'm happy with how they feel. They don't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, so that's what we've done. We filed those off. Now what I think I'm going to do is you'll notice the spoon's got quite a bit of a curvature to it. Of course it's meant for scooping up food, but I want it to have a little less of that. So I'm going to once again, pop it back into my vise and give it some gentle encouragement to be a touch flatter. You could also do this with a hammer if you wanted to, but I don't want the, um, the irregular bumps on it. I want it to have a little bit less curve to it. I can kind of see it doing its thing. And while I've done that, you can see I'm flattening it out a little bit. And at the same point, I kind of want to grab it and bend it back here a little bit, but that's going to be hard to do without a pin. Now you can see that I decided I wanted this upper part here just to curl up a smidgen so that when it flows through the water, it scoops some more water and will spin a little bit more. So that's what I've done. I've flattened, let's see, I've flattened the spoon a touch this way. And you'll also notice I've taken the front of it and swooped it out a bit. And that's just gonna 
um, make it a little bit easier when it goes through the water. It's going to do more of this, opposed to more of this. More of a, a small spin versus a big swooping. And that's the benefit of just taking that lip up a little bit. It's also gonna help me when I go to drill the hole. It'll keep it a little more flat. So that's what I've done there. All right, so now we have our spoon. Um, well, two spoons that we're going to now get prepared to, to drill a hole in. And now, if you want it to function and flow through the water very smoothly, you wanna make sure that you're as even as possible. Uh, you could measure, but in this case, I'm going to do my best to visually make sure that I'm on point. Now what's gonna happen if you go to drill that? The drill, the drill bit's going to wander a little bit, so we're going to give a pre-stamped hole. And I try to go on the contours. You could try to do it this way, but because it's already contoured away from you, your nail could actually wander a bit when you go to give it a stamp. So I do it on the, the other side just to be as accurate as we can. All right. There we go. One hole through my spoon. Now it is a touch warm since I've just done that, so I'm gonna put that one off to the side and start working on this one. Now one thing I didn't mention earlier is that I have protective glasses on. You can see these um, filings and shavings from the metal. You do not wanna get any of that in your eye. So I also try and keep it confined on my desk. I don't wanna blow it around. All right, and there we go. Woo, and they're a bit toasty once you're done from that. I have my handle of my spoon and my actual spoon portion of my spoon ready to go. Now, they, there is a little bit more of, I was actually expecting them to be sharper. They're not very sharp at all. So if you wanna grab your file, pull down. Okay, this one as well. Another reason why I started uh, cutting on this side as well is because it pushes most of the filings that direction and that way they were easy to file off. All right, so now we've gone and taken the filings all off of here just to make sure it's nice and smooth through our hands. So now what we're gonna do is um, we wanna make sure that this stays nice and shiny. The underside, I would like to keep that uh, very shiny looking. But we're gonna take some sandpaper and rough up the outer um, contour of the spoon so that when I want to paint it, it can stick to it. To give it that nice rough surface. All right, now I took these outside for a little bit and painted them up. This one I did a traditional spoon coloring and then while the paint was still wet, I decided to throw a little bit of glitter on there as well. I might regret it later because I'm gonna find it all over my house. However, that adds a little bit of extra sheen and a little bit more attraction. Uh, and this one I just went, I tried to experiment a little bit and did a different color and put some spots on it for a more subtle appearance. Both of them I left uh, shiny on the back so that while they rotate, they will flicker. Now what we're gonna do is take our split rings. Now I've attached um, split rings to the top and the bottom of each of these lures. Now to the bottom of each of them, I'm going to attach a treble hook. Now I just had these red ones on hand, so that's what I'm using, but that there's by no means doesn't need to be red. That's just ones that I happen to have on hand right here and ready. All right, and there's our finished product. We made two spoon lures out of one kitchen spoon. Um, one thing you want to make sure to note is that we didn't actually attach a swivel in the video. You want to make sure you do use a swivel before you actually use it for fishing because as that spoon swi swivels around, it's going to tangle up your line. So putting that swivel on there is going to prevent your line from twisting as well. All right. I hope you like this video and it helps get you a little bit more involved in fishing. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you have more fishing content coming your way. Thank you.